welcome everyone to the meeting of the Waterbury Select Board meeting on Monday, February the 27th, 2023. We're here at the Steel Community Room. Um, those uh, both, we have a few people here as well as on Zoom. Uh, the first item is to approve the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So, Roger's hands. Uh, I will on, move uh, to approve the agenda. Okay. Hold it. Did you ask for any additions or? No, we, I'll do it after the uh, motion and second. Uh, there's a motion and a, a second. I'll second. Okay. Do we have any discussion or additions to the agenda? Yes, I didn't know if maybe the board might consider if we have time going over just a brief review of your manager's items that you sent to everybody. Sure. Just the report. To, just to <coughs> enlighten us on a couple of things there, a little more in before detail. Before executive Where session. Where shall we put that? Before the executive session? <coughs> Sounds good. Okay. Review of manager's report. And then I would also propose, um, I don't know if we do it as part of the town meeting day or its own item, but I heard some proposals around CV fiber pertaining to town meeting and just thought we should discuss that as a board in advance of the meeting. We did have some questions for Jeff about that. So, so uh, part of that item. We can cover it. So we're going to include that in Jeff's session about or separate. I'm okay with including it as long as if everyone okay. else is. So we'll have that there. And I have a last minute uh, grant request that would require select board approval. Grant for uh, the Vermont Aquatic Nuisance Control Grant and Aid Program, the, the Greeter Grant, which is the yeah. Friends of the Waterbury Reservoir. You're familiar with that. Yes, one. I am. Where are you having that? I would assume after the town manager's report, I'm just adding that on to the end. Any Can other items? Before executive session? Right, before the executive session any other items that shall come before us. If not, we have a vote on, on approving the agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, <coughs> any opposed? Any abstentions? The agenda is passed. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda item. The minutes of the two, of the February 13th meeting and first and third uh, class liquor license for American Legion, second class liquor license for R.G. Blake Enterprises, uh, Billings Mobile. I Do I have a motion? I, I move to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Chris. Any second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the consent agenda items? Never. Continue. <coughs> Just as I forget, it's not on the thing. Are we discussing about the tobacco issue? It's down here. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought it was there, but I, I was just looking and I guess I didn't see it. It's, yeah, it's B, sorry. That's okay, we're all set. So consent, motion so, by Chris, second by Roger. Yep, uh, so if there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Now is the time on the agenda for uh, anyone in the public to uh, say something that they wish to the select board. It should be some item that's not uh, already a duly uh, warned item. And anyone, if they can keep that brief within two minutes if possible. Is there anyone who would like to speak? There being none, we'll move on to the next agenda item. The next agenda item is to meet with the uh, existing um, moderator, Jeff Kilgore, about town meeting day. Do you want to come on down, Jeff? Come on. Hi, Tom. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Good to Welcome. see you. I'm delighted that we're going to have a town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> or an in-person town meeting. I think we all are. 
or the or the majority of people in town, I think. Every, I haven't heard too many naysayers. Um, maybe I'll leave the floor to you at first. Okay. Um, you know, again, we plan on having an existing town meeting. One of the items at the uh, meeting is to discuss possible alternatives in future times. You know, again, this would not be binding, but should we want to go to hybrid, you know, and that will be kind of a purely discussion matter. Okay. So that's, that's one of the big uh, adjustment items. The only thing of, of note, I don't know, should we bring up the CD fiber thing? I think it's a great time. Yeah. Uh, the folks from CV fiber, we have granted them some ARPA money. They were, we were glad we approved that. You know, it's already in our budget. Uh, there was talk of them coming for additional money. They never came in for additional money. I know there was some talk. No, they did, Mike. Chris, we, we just talked about a few minutes ago. They, um, came, at, they came at the last meeting. Right. Yeah. Right. On public right forum. Yeah. Right. But I think it was, was it too late? We, it wasn't added to the war. No, we just no, decided, we decided not, decided to. not it to. It was when we, right. were, discussing when we were discussing ARPA two meetings ago, two meetings ago, ago and, and, right. we, and we, we decided, decided to give to some, and we chose not to give to CB Fiber. Fiber. It was our decision. It was our decision. Correct. Uh, and I think part of the point was that they had come to us earlier, asked for a one-time uh, request. Uh, right. I think they requested seventy-five thousand. We gave them fifty. Uh, felt that was the right number, uh, and I don't think our minds have changed right. since then. And again, there's been some talk about our representative uh, Linda um, Gravel. Gravel. Uh, she came to us. There was talk that she was going to. Uh, we have given them time on the agenda, but then there was discussion, could she bring that whole issue up again? And from various discussions, I came back, I think Tom made comments, uh, Karen did as well. I think we felt in her presentation, she can't make any kind of a recommendation for money. But if she, as a private citizen, during the budget session, we, you know, anyone's allowed to make a, amendments when we discuss the budget. So that would be, so we don't know what's going to happen at that point. Is she going to come? But that's how, how we left it, that she, it would not be within her presentation, but she could, as a, as a resident and voter, uh, bring that to the voters you know, as an amendment in the yeah. budget conversation. And my understanding is, according to the law, you, you can't make a motion to something that's not warned already at town meeting day. So she can't make a separate motion to ask for money for CP fiber she can, on its own. She can right. make a motion to amend the budget to add funding for CP fiber. Right. So then the question for you would be, um, I think for you, Jeff, is when that motion is made, it would. I think we. I think it would be useful to have clarity. Is she asking for taxpayer dollars or ARPA dollars? Um, from my perspective, I think that's important. So if it's approved, then I know where to take it. Right. And that's just pre-warning, oh, Alyssa. Well, I guess big picture, my question is, I was hoping during our time today we were going to review the motions in process and thinking of myself. Right. Prior to this year, when I sat in the audience at town meeting, recalling one conversation about 51 South Main Street when we were voting on an amendment to the amendment to the amendment, and, and the actual uh, proposal in question became very complicated quickly. Um, my two thoughts are, in addition to that general review, candidly, I think, like I said, I only heard of this through a one-off conversation with Tom. I think as a board, if we're willing, it's, um, you know, like Roger did tonight, I think, we want to have an ability to explain our justification. Exactly. I will say when I heard about this, it caused me some anxiety because we made the intentional choice to put 
all of our other ARPA funding requests into the budget. So let's just say I have a lot invested in hopefully the budget as a whole cloth article passing. And I think it's unfortunate this has come up because I think it just could get confusing for members of the public. So my lens is towards, um, you know, no disrespect to Linda, I think it's unfortunate if we're going to have this play out <coughs> on the floor. I think our goal was that the hopes would be it would be at a meeting so everything could be presented. So. Um, I think there's a couple levels of, is it worth still a proactive follow-up from us as a board or Tom saying, you as a private citizen can do whatever you like. We as the select board would very much prefer you not try and amend the budget. Um, but again, it is certainly her right. And then I think if we think it is gonna happen or regardless, I think it's great. We have time now to talk through how to make sure that's done clearly um, for everyone who's gonna be present. So before I make any statement, did you have anything you'd like to say at this point before I move along? Um, I think the issue is a good issue to start talking about town meeting. Um, as I like to stress, and I have a number of times when I've been here, the purpose of town meeting is for the members of the municipality to comment on the warning issues. It is their meeting, and I like to stress that. It is mm -hmm. their meeting, it's not the select board's meeting, it's not the manager's meeting, it's certainly not the moderator's meeting. The role of the moderator is to simply a discussion traffic cop within the confines of Robert's rules as amended, or Robert's rules and state statute. With respect to what I think I hear you talking about, I can see it potentially coming up in a variety of different places. One place is, and I don't, have a copy of the warning um, there's probably for the one. town meeting. Is yeah, it in there's here? There's probably one right there. Oh, good. Yeah, but, yep, we got it. But what I was going to say is the usual, the usual process is to talk about the reports of the town officers, or, or the reports of the various committees. And sometimes it can come up there. Uh, someone wants to talk about you know, whatever entity it is, um, they can bring it up there. That's not usually a money item. I guess I don't see the... The money the item would be specific, 10. The, the, the specific committee reports. Um, another... Article 7. Right. Act seven upon the reports. Right. Okay. Reports of the town officers. Um, that may or may not be a part of the report. If there's a report in there, I haven't read the I haven't read the warrant the, the annual report yet. But if there's a report in there that talks about ARPA funding, someone may have a question about that. Mm -hmm. That could conceivably come up there. I don't think it's germane to ask for money there, because it's just to approve the reports. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dodge the budget for just a minute. Um, Another potential place where it could come up is there is the usual uh, list of folks that are asking for funding. Special articles. Uh, special articles starting at 12. <coughs> and if it's not there now, you can't add a new one. Yeah. Because you need to warn um, items so that folks know what they're voting on. And people would need, they would have to have signatures and such. Or the, right. or the, you, you could, you could have already, add, you would, you could already have decided that it's going to go on the ballot. I mean, to go on the, to go on the, the warning for the meeting. Or they could petition. That's the two ways to do that. Right. Now, the last, the last place is the item of the budget. And For those that are very interested in 
a more, what I would call, a, a fairly formal, very strict approach to looking at it. If there were a motion to amend the budget that said, I move to amend the budget to add, I think I heard $75,000 to come from <clears throat> ARPA funding and have that be added to the municipal budget. There would be, I anticipate there would be a second to the amendment. There might be someone that would say, <coughs> Mr. Moderator, point of order that wasn't warned. And then it's up to the moderator to decide whether it should be included or not. And however the moderator rules, I would anticipate there might be an appeal. Um, as those of you that have been to any one of the last 17 in-person town meetings, you know that I start off the meeting by outlining what the rules of the, me the, rules of the meeting are. And one of the things I always talk about is this isn't my meeting, this is the town's meeting, so anything <coughs> that I say can be appealed. And if memory serves, the motion would be, and if someone doesn't craft it right, I will help them to get it so that it is what they want. But I believe memory serves, the, the, the motion is, I move that the decision of the moderator be appealed. And again, I haven't cribbed town meeting yet, but my recollection is that is debatable. One person can have a comment, and then the moderator gets the last word. That's the only time a moderator can comment on something that comes before the meeting. And then, excuse me, Jeff, that, that one comment from whoever, is that for the reason for the appeal? Yes, it has to do with the appeal. Right. And <coughs> then the moderator gets to explain why he, in this case, he made the decision to either say yes or no, it's not, uh, it, it's not, it's not germane. And then the vote is, can, is the decision of the moderator sustained? And so if it's an I vote, it's a majority vote, if it's an I vote, the decision of the moderator is upheld, and wherever the moderator has decided, that stays. <coughs> if the, the vote goes in favor of the nays, then the opposite of what the moderator rules goes into play. So if I were to rule that the decision of the moderator is that the motion to amend the budget, the motion to amend the budget is uh, not allowed, and I am sustained, they can't amend the budget, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it's, it, it's really dependent upon how strongly the folks feel. And included in the discussion might be the reason why um, what you just said, that you know, we, have, we have worked to craft the budget. You, know, you, can, you can just think of the arguments. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the people will use that as a justification for what the moderator said, or if they really want it, um, they can vote against it. Or, again, it depends on how I rule, and I haven't given that issue a whole lot of thought, so I don't know. Tonight, I, don't, I can't tell you what I'd say at the meeting, but that's the process, 
And it's really a process question as to how it's going to be considered. Now, if I rule in favor of that kind of motion, that doesn't mean it's part of the budget yet. It just means that there's a motion to amend. Mm -hmm. And this gets into your this gets into your issue where I I can remember a couple times where we've had motions to amend and an amendment to that. You can only amend you, you can amend a motion and you can amend that one time. So then you go it's a step process. And I try very hard to keep close track of that. <laughs> and I try also very hard to explain what it is we're doing mm -hmm. as we're doing it so that people hopefully don't get too lost in the process. I realize some people can get lost because it's cumbersome. But that's, that's, sort, of the way it, that's sort of the way it works. Yeah. The difficulty is it's less difficult is if there was a motion to put money for CV fiber that's via taxpayer money, you know, because that's just a change. And not that there's going to have to be a sub substantial and you're going to have to have a change in a lot, a lot of budget line items to make the budget balance yes. and or <coughs> change the amount of what the, what the tax taxes will be. Uh, to me, I think as Alyssa mentioned, it's more difficult if it's done via ARPA funds because it's not being warned. We have discussed it in the, in the past. They haven't come within ARPA and we, we have sort of made a decision to not look at, look at that as ARPA so it's not a warned item. That's where I kind of get stuck with this thing. Well, that's, I think that's very, very germane argument to what the moderator, why he should be overruled or why he should be sustained. Right. Alyssa or Ryan? I think. Uh, yeah, back to me, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Back. <coughs> so I, do, I, don't, I want to try to get back on track here. We started out originally talking about one of our concerns with town meeting, and, I, and Mike covered it a little bit, but I think the number one issue is whether or not to turn town meeting to a completely Australian ballot versus in-house, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I had concerns originally. That, uh, can you point out that article? That's not Other an article. business. It's a very <coughs> 21. Okay. So we technically the, only have 20. Right. It's not and binding. Just for background, we right. spoke with attorneys at the League of Cities and Towns, and their advice was not to warn it. Because in theory, if, if the public had a strong feeling about it, someone could um, make a motion to amend the article to make a voluntary, to make a discussion question binding. So they said, put it as other business and just have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So my concern is this, and I expressed it to the board earlier, and you maybe can shed some light on this. Um, having experienced several town meetings, at the end of special articles, and the place empties out. So to have a conversation about traditional town meeting versus uh, Australian ballot, I felt was prudent to be kind of in the forefront uh, as opposed to on the tail end. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, and then there's, of course, discussion about whether or not Tuesday is an appropriate day for it or whether it should be a nighttime deal or that's other discussion. Uh, so that's that. And then as far as Linda Gravel is concerned, our, our conundrum <coughs> was because we had appropriated money to other entities besides Linda, CB Fiber, uh, the um, ambulance service got some, um, uh, Waterbury Ice Center got some, uh, <coughs> EFUD. EFUD got some, and uh, Downstreet Housing got some. Right? Uh, and senior centers, they don't have any yet. I think we'll see where that goes. Um, some of it went directly into the budget. 
uh, so in some of it we talked about whether to be special article or not. And I think the consensus after we struggled with it was to put it all in the budget. But I know there are citizens out there who are concerned about not having the ability to discuss those particular appropriations. Um, I don't know if you can shed any light on that, how that would be better served uh, from, from the select board standpoint and the municipality standpoint. Um, and, you know, I don't want to throw a wrench into our uh, warning at this point. Um, and I guess to, to your point there, as far as changing the budget, I don't believe and I'm trying to think, uh, Bill Sheplick always told me or told us that I don't believe you can change the budget okay. at town meeting. Uh, you can turn it down or approve right. it. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't think you can change the act. You can't pinpoint. You could amend it. <clears throat> Unless, are you telling me that we, we can, they can amend Certain, yeah, they, certain yeah, aspects of the budget. Certainly, certainly, they can they, they can vote to amend the budget. So if if, if there is a fire truck for sale or a fire truck that needs to be purchased, uh, the the people have the right to say we're only going to appropriate half the money for that. Before we had the capital <clears throat> budget, that happened a lot. Right. Those were issues. Those were some of the highlights of town meeting, <laughs> highlights of discussion at town meeting. Because as we like to say, everybody has experience buying a truck. So everybody has an opinion. <laughs> that greater or that those is too expensive. We yeah, should spend yeah, less. Yeah, we, all, we got that all the time. It does. But I think you raise, again, I'm speaking purely from a process standpoint, because that's really my interest in being a moderator. Now, other business, you can pretty much discuss whatever you want under other business. Mm -hmm. It's just not binding on the select board. You cannot make a decision under other business that will bind the select board. Mm -hmm. Now, with respect to the order of any article, you can, I believe it, <laughs> the technical motion is you can amend the orders of the day or simply um, bring an amendment to adjust the warning and have item number other business after article 20 follow an article and that's a procedural that's a procedural <coughs> vote to change basically to change the order of the business and I can't remember whether it's debatable requires an amendment I don't think it requires a two-thirds vote but I'll have that answer for you on town meeting day so my, I'll, I'll just so tell you that, that my number that one you can do. my number one concern about that, <clears throat> and again, I'll go with whatever the board decides. I mean, that's my number one concern of that is just to acquire maximum input mm -hmm. from the public on this particular issue because it, you know, to me, it's a very important issue. Uh, so I don't know if you have any recommendations or feelings about whether it should be earlier in the program, later in the program. I think it'd be fine where it is. Uh, well, I, or should there be some kind of, did we decide to notify it, people the best way we could to, that this would come up as? So it's on here, but what Tom was saying is we got legal advice saying if you say it's an article, right, okay. I could stand up and say no town, you know, everything Australian ballot next year and it would be binding. Right. So that was why we had at the end, because just to say personally, I, I agree around the participation. I think it's a question of, you know, I did the whole thing about is Karen's article three and four, not Karen's, but the articles regarding the town clerk coming up right away. Sorry, article two. Um, oh, nope, sorry, four, I keep getting around five. The town clerk one year to three year, I thought that was a weird way to start, but we roundabouted in that delightful meeting and this is what we warned to the public. So 
Um, okay. I, I hear your concerns, Chris, but I think if what Jeff was saying, if there was an adjustment to change the order of the day, and I'll see Tom's because he spoke with Vermont League of Cities and Towns, I think if that adjustment and that brought the discussion of town meeting up to Front Street, are we then... It's still other business. It's still not a warned item, so that's... Fine for conversation. Not going to mind. So, but so they couldn't on that item change that order. So, uh, maybe this will answer in, in satisfying my concern. Is there, as part of your uh, introduction, could you say something to the fact that this topic will come up under other, you know, because. That's a good way to do it, is yeah. to encourage people to stay because it need, right. needs to that's fall what, I guess in other business, would you, and it's an important item we you wish people would stay. To, to, to do that, or can you, or? Um. Or not. I don't want to put you in a pickle, <laughs> either. No, that's, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that comes with the territory. I don't know if that's <laughs> I'm picking or stuff, but we just want I've been in enough to be pickles in town meeting before, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could do it. I can remember a couple. Could but anyway, um, I guess part of my reticence about calling attention to a particular item is that, one, people can read. Number one. And number two, um, if they have an interest, they'll stay. And number three, I don't want to get called on the carpet, but well, why didn't you call out yeah. Article 12, Sub 4, or 13, right. or 18? Because they're important too. That's just my thought. Go ahead, Roger. Um, this is uh, going back to the CV fiber. Um, I was just reading through their uh, uh, their write up here. Uh, it's in the uh, town report, and it says that CV fiber cannot receive town tax dollars, and will support ongoing operations with subscription revenues. So uh, I don't know what Linda's intentions are, but it says right here that they are not allowed to accept tax dollars. I think her intention originally that she expressed to the board was just to update the public on where CV. That's what I was thinking. That's what we all. Want. Yeah. Yeah. So, just a point of order. Yeah. Good catch. Well, it could be ARPA funding. Yes. They can receive our money. Right, so that doesn't take away entirely the the potential of asking for increased funding, but it would be through ARPA funding, not tax tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't know that she expressed an opinion or a, a thought to do that. Right, she was just looking to update the public as to how CV fiber was going. Correct. Well, let me ask the town manager a question because we're getting into a legal question here, I think, and. The role of the moderator is not to respond to legal questions. So I guess what my question of the town manager is, would be, can the, can the town at a town meeting direct how ARPA funds are to be spent? Here's where it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> ARPA funds are town tax dollars. Mm -hmm. Once they were given to us and the select board about a year ago declared a revenue loss, yeah. we have to report to the federal government how they're spent, but you could pass a resolution today saying, assume everything passes on the warning that we've got $300,000 in ARPA funds left. You could pass a resolution today saying, we spent 300 grand on payroll last year. That's what we used it for. Over and done. The funds are, now they're just in our back pocket. Part of the general government. And so 
if, if Linda can't receive town tax dollars, um, they're town tax dollars. They're under purview of the town taxpayers. It's a distinction without a difference, I think. Alyssa? Do you have a follow-up, Roger? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have two, one for Mr. Moderator. Would you find it germane for Mr. Viennes here to call attention to the other discussion during the reports of town officers? Which is to say, he as moderator doesn't have to say, please stick around, but could you or Tom, when you're going over the budget, say, hey, please stick around for the other discussion item? Because I recognize and respect his point around the neutrality of the moderator, but if right. we as board members or our board chair or our manager is presenting, is there an appropriate way for them to acknowledge that folks can read and that their attention span might be less than two full sheets of paper? Well, let's say that the article on the floor is, uh, I move that Waterbury change the term of the town treasurer from a one-year term to a three-year term effective March 5th, 2024. Moved by Ms. Johnson, seconded by Mr. Clapp. Um, would anyone like to speak to the motion? And Mr. Vien's hands goes up. And he starts speaking about <laughs> the last <laughs> <laughs> And I would have to rule him out of order. Out of order. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you have to speak to the motion. Right. But by the time I've ruled him out of the order, what's happened? <laughs> the guy's message cats out of the bag. <laughs> you know, that's happened before, too. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying for time. But, but you know, just, just, just bear in mind, and I think it's important to really understand um, what it is town meeting is all about. Um, these are smart people. They, 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 they arguably read what's in the town report. They, have a, they try to understand what's going on. Sometimes the budgets are unintelligible, but sometimes they're not. Um, they have questions. That's why they're, that's one of the reasons that they come to town meeting. And so I think you need to, you need to, just think about every aspect of town meeting with the highest amount of respect for the voters. Hard. Is what I would say. Relax, let, let things happen, and hope for the best. Two, <laughs> two quick questions. <laughs> Want me to write a front porch forum post about the other business? Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't interfere mm -hmm. in anything, right? right? Great suggestion. And then I, mm -hmm. we can put an easel when you walk into town meeting explaining why you need to stick around for other business. Yeah. I can go on the trading. I think it's a great idea. Sure. Okay. I can go on the trading post, who has a lot of people, local people who listen, and announce that. And Just I would say, say for town meeting in general, if that hasn't been done. I yeah. <laughs> for both <laughs> town, meeting. town meeting, but I mean, we're going to have a discussion of, you know, the format of, of town meeting, and it will at least get people. If you could, we have to uh, have that in the other business discussion. So that may get some people to just come. Yeah. You know, people need to, I think people are concerned. I've seen people, I know people in like Essex Junction and Bristol who have had changes to their, you know, you know, town meeting. You know, a lot of towns are fighting with that, this whole issue. Yeah. And so, so we, as to Chris's point, we don't want to give this short shrift. Right. I think- well, Don't I think, forget too, excuse me for interrupting, but, It wasn't that long ago when folks were concerned, really concerned, about what was going to happen to the village police department. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> at that town meeting, it was the first item after the election of the moderator so that people could come and vote and leave. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, 
there were, I don't know, it was somewhere high. between four and 700 people at town meetings. Yeah. One of the by far the it best was, attended it was town meetings. It was huge. Yeah. Yeah. The largest town meeting I can remember attending. And so, you know, if you, if it's something worthwhile, or if people perceive it as being worthwhile, they'll show up. But at this point, we have a warning, you know, so. Right, we, we, have, we have to live with the warning. We have to live with what the warning says. But the warning's not gonna be binding, and I think, I think you need to, if, if you're going to post something on Front Porch Forum about the issue, I think out of fairness, you also need to tell them that it's not gonna be binding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think that's we all knew that yeah. to begin with, right? Yeah, right. This is just the preliminary steps to getting that question answered. Yeah, but you're the pros here. Some some people who have been in town for maybe one or two years as their right. first or second or fifth town meeting, they might not remember that other business is not binding on the select board. But we want to hear from people. It's just like no different than when we had the recreation plan or any of these other things. We have separate public meetings that you want to have, you know, input from from people. And this is we know it's not binding, but we at least want to get the conversation started on what the community really wants. And maybe this would be something for having some sort of a, a true public meeting, maybe just on town meeting format. So Mike, I think Elizabeth had something she'd like to say or question. Um, if I can. If it's, sure. We haven't gone by that point. Um, <laughs> you want to come on down? Not really, but I will if I just for, to. Just for it Zoom. It formal, it was just a comment. It's just oh. so Danny can hear you okay. on Zoom. All right. So I have some of the same concerns that Chris and I think Alyssa have mentioned about people being aware that this subject is coming up because I do think it's going to be very important for a lot of people that have made it a point to show up at town meeting each year. I know you know that. And while I certainly agree that people can read, <laughs> um, at least most people hopefully that come can read, there may be some that can't, but when I read this other business discussion of town meeting day format and considerate, consideration of alternatives, I wouldn't buy that if I hadn't been attending this meeting, these meetings, no that that meant anything other than maybe we'll change, you know, the order of how things work at town meeting. I would have no idea the extent at which we're looking right. at changing or, or possibly changing. Right. So because I think it would be a real, people would be really blindsided if they came to a meeting, left a little early, learned there was a discussion that they would have wanted to be a part of. I think it would only reflect poorly on everybody. So I, that's all I really wanted to say. Was well, your hand up to us? Yeah, I was just saying, I, I think we hear that. I think I just wanted to state that because it is not binding, no binding decision will be made on the basis of what happens next Tuesday. So just to say, you know, like, I hear you and I think our goal is collectively to have as many folks there as possible, but given that this has been warned as it is, I think we're talking about ways to try and increase engagement through Tom's post, through maybe messaging on the day of, so that folks who do show up on the day of are encouraged to stay. I would also just say, I said you sit, you should sit through all of town meeting anyway. If you're if you're able to get there at 9 a.m., get there and stay. Right. I mean, well, that's part of the. My understanding is that we discussed the fact that some people can attend. That's what's. Totally. Uh, this to, to point, and some people get there and they have a limited amount of time they can be there and would feel really slighted again if they found out that something that was really, really important got sort of, you know, they, they had a discussion, they weren't able to be a part of that. It is our meeting, and it is important that people have a say in such an important topic. I, I, I heard Alyssa say a few weeks ago, or maybe a month or so ago, that this is something that, you know, she had great memories. I have fond memories. I didn't understand exactly what was going on, but I knew how important it was to my family to attend the meetings, to be there. And I think a lot of people feel that way, and I think that tradition is important. So I'm hoping that people understand that we're going to bring it up and what it means that we're really talking about rather than just a basic discussion. Your point is That's very well taken. Okay. So, I, yeah, I mean, to, I don't know who made the point here, but it's in it's in the warning, so we can't change it here. But, right. Um, 
So I think maybe I think Tom's idea, Danny's right. It's a great one. I think this is a start. It will get it in the forefront. I'm sure Lisa's going to probably have it in the roundabout. You know, will be talked about, and it will probably be followed up with you know some, some sort of maybe a public meeting. Yeah. Okay. And just to yeah say we've said it, but we, I think we kind of get lost in the weeds sometimes. Like this is the first conversation. We will definitely need to have follow up conversations, whether it's you know additional meetings or surveys or Zoom calls, and then we have to have you know an actual meeting like we just saw in what Duxbury to to actually make a decision. So just easing people's minds that of course we want people at town meeting to be part of the conversation, but it won't be the last time they get to have input and. It takes, you know, specific planning ahead to have the meeting to make the tr decision. So um, lots of steps in between. Thanks, Danny. Well, I was just going to point out that uh, I believe that Duxbury has made the decision to go to Australian ballot, but they also have an informational meeting where people can thoroughly discuss all these issues and have that same interaction and, and public discussion uh, before people get to vote on it. And the advantage of having an Australian ballot is that more people are able to participate. In fact, many more people do participate. Anything else? Oh, I was going to try and pivot us hard into brass tacks if it was OK and ask both the manager and the moderator to be hopefully um, what, having not been on the board previously at a town meeting, um, I understand generally there's language around the proposed motions and just what the process would be for us as a board to have that. I understand Tom has a presentation. I don't know if Mr. Shoplock is going to have a presentation, but kind of what, what the more detailed layout and agenda beyond the warning is and how we get that finalized and understood by all of us before the second. Yeah, we've got that language ready to go for articles 10 and 11. And it would, of course, change if someone successfully amended the budget. Um, there's language from prior years, but essentially refers to the sums for the different expenditure items. Um, I'm fully prepared to give a presentation. Um, I wasn't you know, planning on a PowerPoint, unless you want that. Um, I was planning to walk people through the major points uh, that's highlighting how, the major items. That's how Bill usually <coughs> used to do it. I think that's very appropriate. Mm -hmm. The one piece I just want to point out, um, I cannot speak at your town meeting unless authorized. Yes, I'm a town resident. So ah. there has to be, yeah. okay. my understanding, yes. a vote. Correct. Yeah. So, um, so people could say, no, we don't want to hear from <laughs> ah. town manager. Case, you'll, ha you'll have a copy of my okay. <laughs> no <problem>. proxy. <laughs> Normally, and I'll go home, I guess. <laughs> normally, what happens is if when I know that someone is not a town resident, um, the moderator can act on unanimous consent. Um, the way I would start off with is the town manager is not a resident of the municipality and would like to speak on a variety of different motions that come up. Is there any objection to the non-resident town manager being able to speak? And I would probably say something broad enough is it at the meeting. Now, if one person objects, then we have to have a vote <coughs> to uh, procedural vote to permit a non-resident to speak, which is a change of the rules, which requires a two-thirds vote. And you go through all that process. You know, count, count hands, uh, do seven people call for a ballot. People ballot. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> Karen's going to come with a whole bunch of slips of paper, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Mm -hmm. Because that can happen 20 some odd times. It probably won't, but <laughs> I, think it, it, I don't think it's averaged one a year in the time that I've been moderator, but when it does come, it. Yeah, we always mm -hmm. usually have one paper ballot per yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the way we would introduce the town manager. And what I might even do. Normally, what we do 
after the moderator is elected and the moderator goes through the rules is I would look to Mr. Bard as chair and say, Mr. Bard, would you like to introduce the members of the head table? And he'll introduce everybody and I might say at that point in time that'd be a, a fitting place for it would be now the town manager who has just been introduced is not a resident of the town right um, is there any objection to the town manager speaking on the various items that come up as they may come up out of the warnings to the meeting and if there's no objection then we've gotten that out of the way earlier so we just have to do it once just have to do it well, depending on how broad you want to make it, yeah. <coughs> we, can do it we, can, we can do it for the whole meeting mm -hmm. well, just soon do it for the whole meeting so i found in carla's files um a warning from 2020 where the, the the verbal motions are drafted and assigned right. to people, right. which is what That's I was, I was gonna... hoping that you all were was an objective for this evening. Mm -hmm. I don't know who maybe Jeff can speak to who drafted these. Is this something you would assist with? Carla and I used to work on them. Okay. I don't know if you saw your email, but I asked. I emailed you today and asked if you'd oh. send me a word copy of the warning. I did not. I'm so sorry. And then I can I can prepare the motions for everybody. Okay. And then what we do is, as 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 Karen just said, there's a little box in front okay. of each motion, and that's mm -hmm. who's going to do the motions. Who's and it really doesn't it really doesn't matter. But what happens? Um, after somebody moves a motion is I typically will say if Chris is moving a motion I would say Mr. Viennes would you like to speak to the motion and sometimes he says yes sometimes he says no mm -hmm. Mr. Clapp on your mm -hmm. move would you like to speak to the motion and you know you can just do something yeah. very cursory you can go into detail um, and it really makes no difference right. mm -hmm. who sometimes you just want, want a little background yeah. on why you, like for instance right. why we're doing the uh, three-year term for town town right. clerk yeah. I think people are going to want to know not just it's it's mm -hmm. there because we wanted to do that there's some justification to do it mm -hmm. so if you want to just run down through and then when I do the motions yeah I'll Add the names to them. I'm sorry, I didn't, I, you must no, have that's been fine. after 4:30, but I can definitely get you the word doctor. Yeah, yeah. No because that helps speed up the process. Yeah, right. I, I, I converted it just today. Right. <laughs> Chris, so now that we're on the motions, um, I talked with Tom the other day. Um, the last board of a well, not the last, because apparently there's been one prior, one since the last one that I was at. Uh, board of abatement meetings. Mm -hmm. Assessors. Huh? There was an assessor, right? <coughs> or sorry, listers. Yeah, listers. Um, over the years, my wife being town clerk <coughs> or uh, bookkeeper for 35 years, um, I've heard plenty of horror stories. Um, irate taxpayers who have missed the deadline. Um, Witnessing it myself one day, sitting in, in here in the office, uh, signing orders, and then the previous board of abatement <coughs> meeting that I was at, um, a couple people were in, and um, discussions were were uh, heard, and items were talked about. The the uh, we had a. a, a Bill Shuppert brought in a uh, list of state statutes that could, oh, items that could be grieved. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Um, the end result is 
they will walk away with with uh, no change in in the penalties and interest. Uh, and they were very upset at the people that made the judgment call. So much so that one of the two people uh, reminded me of that night, the next time I drove by a person by waving to me. Um, I was upset by comments from another, so I actually went and visited that person. And I, had a, I just said to him, I need some of your time after what happened the other night. And I explained to him that every year at town meeting, the article comes up to the taxpayers to set tax rates and penalties and interest. And the voters of, of Waterbury vote on that every year. They're the ones that set the rules in place and then people like you elect people like me to uphold those rules. And for you to think that I'm responsible, have any way, shape, or form responsibility in the fact that, you know, you were put in the predicament you were in, you're upset at me, I'm just as upset at you because you make me uphold the laws that you people voted in. And I told Tom that, or actually talked to him a little bit about, is that worth discussing at town meeting? Or should I just let it go? Um, you know, to have people that you know, and this isn't the first time. I mean, I had a good friend of mine really verbally abuse me because he had to be a penalty of interest. That was a couple of years before. Um, and we had no part in it, you know. We were just there to say, these are the rules. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't see why you can't say that when the motion comes up whatever it is you want to move that's on the article. Speak to the motion. Speak to the motion. That's about as germane as anything I can think of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why well, is it is it is it the right thing to do, I guess? Is it is it worth doing? <coughs> I'm asking the board. I think it is. I, I mean because I've watched a couple of the staff get verbally abused by a person who in the same boat, uh, and that person explained, you know, you know how many pieces of property I have in Stowe, this, that, and the other thing, and he, he was getting to the point where I was signing orders one day, and I almost went up to him and said to him, if you have so many pieces of property, then why isn't it buried in your head that you owe taxes every year? So, Chris, no matter what you say that day, you're still only going to capture know the people who are potentially Waterbury taxpayers right so that guy that day mm. he was a Waterbury taxpayer who obviously spends most of his time in Stowe may or may not even attend the meeting correct so wouldn't you, be there for that under, understood but I you know I'm sure it happens in other towns as well oh, <laughs> you I know we're not out. we're not you know we're not the only ones it's just uh, I don't know it was it was uh, I wouldn't even call it upsetting because I got broad shoulders, I can take it, but it was irresponsible, maybe that's, I don't know if that's a better word. Um, Chris, to, would yeah. you like me to do a front porch forum post about Article 9 and explain that it's a binding legal article, so if this is voted in, people come to town hall or to the select board and they're late for a payment, then our answer is we're sorry, but... We're upholding the voters. I, I mean, I think that would be a good thing, Alyssa. Well, let Chris respond to No, I just, I, I yeah, I, I suppose that might okay. be worthwhile. <clears throat> I just didn't want to, 
rub people the wrong way, obviously, by bringing that up at, at, at town meeting. But, but yet, I think it's very yeah. important yeah, it, it, it's, that it people... It's brought up every now and again. Mm -hmm. Every couple of years, people... People talk about it, and I'm happy to talk about it. You know, and I'll try to be as politically correct as a, you know, I can. I just want to make the point that, just what I said, you people, yeah. and, and I. So let me ask you this: If I did decide to talk about it, and again, I take, I take uh, uh, suggestions from the board members. If I did talk about it, should it be prior to uh, that article being voted on, or? After. No, you have to yeah. discussion like right, that. Okay. Once so, the motion is right, ready, I want to speak to it. Right. And yeah. that what I would do. You speak to motion. Okay. Just like we do here, you make a motion, it's seconded, then you someone speaks to the motion. Melissa. I was just gonna ask Tom and Karen quickly as staff, do you have any concerns about if we suddenly lost uh all of the revenue from I guess in an ideal world my thought is everyone pays their taxes on time and it's the amount we need and but let's I I personally am leaning towards supporting Chris being the one to introduce Article 9, so then you could speak to it, mm -hmm. um, and just recognizing that maybe if we bring it up, our well-educated and intelligent citizens might say, yeah, we shouldn't charge any interest and penalties, which personally I have no problem with, but I just want to acknowledge as a board we're making that discussion probably easier than harder through this, yeah. which I'm personally willing to do, but just want us to be intentional about. Off the top of my head, it's about 50 grand. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't have any catalyst to get your money if you don't charge interest and penalties. All right. So you, which, and you could speak to that at the meeting. I guess that's my one. I think Chris making a point that, like, well, it takes we're legal setting legal this and then holding point, it you to you. If you don't have any leverage as far as penalties and interest, to, you know, I won't, and I don't even want to use that word, force people, but uh, to bring people to the mm -hmm. table to pay their taxes, then it's legal action. Right, and, and then it's it, costing you. Yeah, then it costs money. And then it's <laughs> right. It's our, our, I agree our with not. everything you said, Alyssa, with the exception of, I don't agree that we should not have interest and penalties. I think we should. Everyone knows that when their taxes are due, I'm as guilty as anyone. I wait until the end because I don't. I don't want to keep my money in the bank, and I don't pay the town in advance. If they were giving me a discount, I might consider doing it. But everyone knows they could pay a month ahead in advance, so there's no question that, you know, that, that you're paid. That's people's personal preference on how they want to pay their debt. Well, I mean, I guess my biggest problem is waiting to the 11th hour and, you know, and then blaming somebody else for it. Um, it and, the, and it's, and to their, to their defense, you know, the post office has bungled it many times. Mm -hmm. uh, Been there, done that. So Chris, on Article 9, with all respect to all of us and the really healthy agenda we still have, I'm comfortable with Chris on 9. Do we feel okay with that? I totally agree. I'm writing Chris I next to 9. We still need 5, 6, 7, 8, and the whole rest of them. Right. So let's what, get a signing. Do we want to start with, uh, I guess, One? Article 5. Right, 5. I think Roger wanted to say something. No, I'm not, I just assume. Uh, I'm oh. with Alyssa. Let's let's move through the. Uh, someone does article. have to. Someone does have to nominate the moderator in, in Article One. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Everyone good yeah. with Jeff Kilgore? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a great job. Tonight. Just, just want to get that clear. <laughs> Put it this way: Are you running? This is my last year. <gasps> I was really? wondering if it's your oh. Oh. It's an honor. So we're going to have to look. <gasps> yeah. Thank you for your service. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'd, 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 I'd incorporate be, that into my yeah. motion. Yeah. I'd be glad to do Article 5 because I have another talk Gilmore. with um, Karen about the whole change, and I think I could speak well to that. Okay. Five, Mike? Jeff, how, how do we go about recruiting another Jeff Gilmore? I think yeah, we have someone oh, interested, we do? at least one that was probably far superior to me. Hmm. Hmm. I can't imagine that. <laughs> Done a great job over the years. He wants to ride around in his Mercedes a little more. <laughs> a little too early. 
Anyone want to do Article 6? Oh, who's doing 5? Myself. Okay. Thanks. Um, well, others should probably step up here. But I can do number 6. Okay. Six. So that's number 6 and number 9 for me. I'll do 7. 7. But I'm going to guess I'm going to yield to Tom or others, right? Is that the whole kit and caboodle? We should... <coughs> Uh, ten is the, the budget. Ten is the big one. So seven should be boring. Excellent. So Alyssa is seven. Eight. Dilly? Yeah, won't be there. She oh. won't be there. Um. Um, I'll be glad to take on eight. This one was always awkward, right? Because it's your own I was just going to say, can someone make that from the can floor? Can I make a, a motion, Jeff? You can. Do you want that, me to I do think, that one? I think that would be appropriate. I appreciate that. that, that I think can. that's awkward for all of you. Yeah, yes. Bill, made, Bill would almost always make the motion for eight, yeah. if I recall. Right. Yep. I mean, we can yeah. ask Bill to do it. So we'll be there. Or I can do it. Let's keep Maybe. it in the house. I assume Bill's going to be there. So Bill Karen? will be there, but I can sign up. Karen. Karen. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Good. I would say good. <laughs> She's drawing boundaries. Okay. Right. Now we're on ten. Uh, so now we're on ten. How, how about uh, two, three, and four? Do they get? Uh, those are Australian. Australian you know, those, those are Australian balance. Oh, Australian balance. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll be, do ten. Four. I would do 11. You're doing 11, right? Yeah. <coughs> you want to do 12? Sure. You know you have to read the whole thing. Ah. You know my class in <laughs> right, high that's school that's was loudest. loudest. <laughs> yeah, she's, she'd be good at that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Print's not that small. 13 is... Now those I have noticed come from the floor. Uh, that often has I recall like representatives from the floor. If I, yeah. Yeah. If I remember correctly, yeah. you're right. So um, the notes, uh, someone from the organization who could hopefully speak intelligently to or Steve Lott speak or Dave Luce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. Steve, Steve makes so many. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, Seven, eight. I would note we each have two, which is wonderful. Uh, apologies, Danny, but of those present in person, we are each doing two with Karen one, is what I have with my note, assuming the rest are four. Um, does someone want to? Should so I reach out to these organizations and ask them to? Yes, I, w I would definitely reach out because I think they should have a representative there, whether it be a resident or not. They should ideally have a, rep a resident who could speak somewhat intelligently to what their organization does. Well, the only one that's my question is um, Green Mountain Transit Agency. I don't have... Steve often does that because I think he's our liaison to their board. Oh, so right. he's he used often, to be on the board. Yeah. Right. Okay. So okay. I'm so trying I'll to, speak to it. If not, I love... I'm trying to remember, the bus Jeff. this morning. Is it, is it uh, representatives of special articles from 13 through 20? That read the motion, read the motion, or is it just speak up? They yeah, will do their Bill. best at moving, <laughs> and, and I will help them through it. Well, help them through it. I, I'm just trying to think back. Of course, it's been what three years now since we had a meeting. It's been. With, um, it used to be all of them were from the floor, and then right. when the select board incorporated a certain number, like all of Article 12, Plus. without sort of routinely. It was less than $1,000 to start, then I think it went to 1500 Then that's when the board, someone from the board moved those, right. that group. But it's, right. but it's pretty much been the floor. Yeah, I thought the, they, the representatives from the floor came up and spoke to that. On Article 12? No, no, from no, 13, oh, from 13, yeah, oh, yes, from 13 through, the, yeah. the board has, or somebody has right. to 
read the article, right? And right. then a representative will come up and and and, speak and to the I whole would typically reads. I would typically ask that person who made the motion, would you like to speak to the motion? Right. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a representative, then you get a pretty good presentation. If it's not a representative, then they would say, well, if you turn to page 22 of the town report, that's where their report is. They're a good organization to do so a lot of good just things. Just to be clear, Brian Kravitz, Randall Street resident, mm -hmm. he's Vermont, Central Vermont Basic, excuse me, Central Vermont Vermont Basic Education. So I will contact him and I will ask him to, if he can be in attendance to ask for Article 13, the funding, mm -hmm. and he will approach to the microphone and ask for that funding mm -hmm. and say a few words, keep it three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. is, am I understanding correctly what the objective is? No, my question, and maybe I'm... I don't know that we've ever reached out here. to people in the past. Oh, okay. So we no, we haven't. And I think that's what's created the problem, is then you get the Dave Luces and the Steve Lotch speeches, is, you know, it's I do remember representatives of these some, organizations some of them. coming up and right. speaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of them, but my question is, maybe I have, maybe I've gotten answered already, but I just can't get it in my head. Don't, doesn't somebody from the stage, meaning one of us, have to read each one of these? No, no. No, they were always read by it, people on the floor. Right. According yeah. to the notes I read. Hmm. Yeah, I, and for I some reason I thought we did it, but no, maybe like I'm not. Steve rarely. Okay, rarely. No, I think someone from the stage can, but I think it's much more appropriate for someone from the organization to make that motion. So where does First. Linda and um, Rena, um, and the representatives, oh, where are they going to go? Where do they fit? Linda Rubel. Walter is green up, is he? Um, and he's, they don't uh, have a place on the warning. Well, is it John seven? Walter right. just John sort of, officer. when there's, when there's, a lull, or if we're <laughs> progressing too quickly, and we want to <laughs> <laughs> slow it down, <laughs> slow it down a bit. You know, the John is always ready, willing for me to call on him. Um, so you, yeah, I, I was going to say you're the one that makes yeah. that decision and I calls mean, on. We have we a, have um, Teresa and Teresa Tom. Teresa and Tom. Right. That mm -hmm. want to talk. Yep. Um, John always is good for a few words. Um, Linda but when we don't have a separate appropriation for uh, the uh, his uh, Mad River Alliance, Mad River Alliance. They're, in the they're in the budget. They're in the, the budget. Uh, yeah. There are some. Uh, there's the Public Service Award, mm -hmm. right. Keith Wallace Award. Keith Wallace. Um, that that's in there. Occasionally, the governor comes, and um, mm. we let him speak. So you're so there's no um, assignment on my part to tell Linda, for example, when she'll be called upon to give her update on CB Viber. Are you do you want me to call on her and ask to give an update on CB Fiber? Ask me that question differently. <laughs> <laughs> would you be willing? Um, Linda would like five minutes to give the community an update. I'm, I'm, would that be like before other business? Maybe that's a spot. I try to work them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how quickly people leave. Yeah. You know, we try to work people in. <coughs> to a commercial break. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess she will need that. She will be in attendance. I told her she won't have the time. So if she won't, it'll be when you call okay. her. Now what about the Waterbury Band? I have not heard from them. Pardon? I have not heard from them. They are here for 800. No, no, no. no. I mean, oh, for uh, oh. they playing before the meeting. They, no one has contacted me to ask me if they want, if they can do that. I don't, is it my responsibility to ask them to do it? I don't, I don't know. Maybe how they're not they, even aware that we're having a town meeting. I don't know how they were <laughs> ever contacted. Oh, but. Tell me. <laughs> well, they find me when they want money. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. They found me just fine then. I mean, the I, I wasn't. Um, it was described oh. to me that as lovely as the performance was, it was incredibly oh. difficult because it came at a time when there was a lot of people entering mm -hmm. and people were trying to vote and it made the checklist very challenging. So there's not a lot of reason for me to sort of compels me to go seek that out. 
Um, and no one from the organization has contacted me to ask me if they can perform. Mm -hmm. They might show up, I suppose. I don't know. If, if the board wants me to reach out to them, I have a point of contact. I can do that. I didn't know how that has been done in the past. The, is that the Rotary Club, by any chance? What? No, the Waterbury Bay. No, the Waterbury Bay. Are they associated with the Rotary Club? Or no, not so. at all. No? No, they have their own organization. I would say let us know if you're here, but otherwise. Okay. We'd be well to have them play before the start, if they, if should they wish. But I, I didn't know the protocol, how if they're contact. I figured they just contact us to... You know, I assume going. that as well, but we're, you know, a little more but than a week out, and no one's gotten in touch with me to ask me what time. Yeah. They COVID they're changed probably the practicing last time. tonight yeah. for, right. for the big <laughs> occasion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mike, did you want to bring up that thing I'll about the? Well, I don't know if we want to keep it. It's up to you. It's, it was sort of your initiative. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll bring it up. I I don't I don't think anyone would object to it. We had a group in the wassailing um, session of, of Winterfest in their competition, and one group did this song for basically Bill and Carla. Uh, if you, anyone who was there who saw that. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the song? Uh, it was uh, to the tune of uh, Fire, and the whole play was on, about like where's Bill, where's Carla? Oh, haven't you heard? They've retired. Hired. And uh, then yeah. we have Tom, who's hired. <laughs> it, it was very well received at Winterfest. I mm -hmm. think. It, the, it I think it would be a winning, nice uh, winning song. <coughs> right. For the yeah. offering to sing. Contest. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, if, if you really want to have a low turnout. <laughs> We want to have the band. The band that uh, what was the name of the band? Uh, it's called uh, Grindelwald and the Deutsche Bears. <laughs> right. is the name of the group. But, uh, I think Bill would love it. I think I think Carlo would love it. I know Tom won't mind at all. <laughs> I just think it would be a nice little, little tribute since Bill's Bill and Carla have retired, and it'd be a very. It's a two-minute thing. It's not well, very long. Fit it in. Will you confirm if they're attending, one of you? Well, that's why I've been Having speaking. never heard of this group, I can't invite I've been them. Speaking, I've been speaking with Roger because he was going to be in touch with them. Yeah, I, uh, if, if we want them, I can reach out and let you know <laughs> within two days whether they're going to yeah. be available to, to pull it off. I think a uh, number of the members will be there. Sorry. I'm amenable to fitting if, it in if our moderator I don't can think we need fit it in. in. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's like three, it's three a, minutes. Yeah, two, three minute thing. It's very, very quick Sounds and I great. think it'll be well received. Can't wait. And mm -hmm. nice nice for the two retirees. Now it's not a secret. Okay. Uh, anything else? We've went through the <coughs> entire how do we want to bring up in other business? Who wants to frame that? I'll do it. I, I was going to ask you, but I like volunteers. I think you would be well, do, that's, do that's great. Not what you, that's not part of your purview, Jeff, to say is there any other business? Well, what I would normally say is um, we have now reached the last right. article of the warning, and under this warning, uh, the town may take no action which binds the select board. And um, is there anyone that would like to come to a microphone and say something? Mr. Moderator? Well, that's where we would, we would start. And usually we get four or five mm -hmm. different people who make a public something or mm -hmm. other. I will plan to write out, because this is one, as we've talked about, that has right. some loaded implications. I will plan to write out what I will say, which I will just send you all for information. And if you have concerns, you can respond directly to me individually. Perfect. Alyssa, I know if you, it may not be possible, but I'd love to see it if you do you have it done before the end of the week? And or if you need some help or get stuck, let me know. I'm happy to help. Yeah. End of the week, Danny? Yeah, that would be great. 
I don't know if that's what it um, Mike, maybe Danny could give you some language. Just I want to make sure we recognize Danny and her contributions <coughs> on the board, though we know there's oh, extenuating absolutely. circumstances. So maybe she can just help you with I think that's how we want to phrase right, that. Right at the top, when we totally, make the totally. introductions. Just, I, yeah, make you know, sure it's so. you know, not going to go into yeah. the specifics, but you know, just that due to some health By the reasons. end of the week, I think so. Right. And Jeff, uh, are you going to, uh, when you uh, get this into word format, are you going to write exactly what I should say for Article 1? Or do I need to uh, sure. come, come sure. up? We'll, okay. we'll get that all put together. OK. All right. Thank you. Thanks. OK. So you'll get the whole screw up the whole the first, first shoot item. match for everyone, get it to all the board members. And if I think maybe what I'll do is I'll get it to either Karen or, or Tom. Tom. Because they have some, they'll have some numbers to put in, yep. some dates to put in, and then we'll go from there. Yep. Perfect. Well, is it? Last note: I'm planning to be there probably around eight, but is there a formal time we'd like to be there? I think. That's I mean, I know the meeting is at nine, and I'm planning to be semi early, but. I think eight. Yeah, that's time I'm fine. Be there. Okay. Mm. I don't I think you'll see that many people there. That I know, but like these meetings, right. I like to no, be there should, early and get ready. We should be there early to three people. What? He said yeah. you don't see very many people there. I thought like, you'll see me there. I know. You can vote before. Do you need help uh, setting up anything? Or is it all uh, we're setting set up, up on Monday. Monday. Okay. Setting up Monday afternoon. So if anybody's around 3 o'clock, you can certainly come Monday carry three things. Um, and then tear down on Tuesday night Great. after 7. That's big fun to be had as well. So. Okay. Sell it, Karen. Big fun. Yep. Big fun. Now, you've made arrangements for PA system? Some no, I, I realized tonight I was going to need those microphones. I do have a contact at the school, Brad Grisham, oh. who's done this many times with Carla, so I'm sure he can facilitate that for us. I'll reach out to him. And is any part of this um, being either videoed or streamed? Um, it is not being live streamed, although Orca did offer. I found that to be confusing because you can't participate else from elsewhere. So I, I declined the live stream. I invited them to tape it if they want, but it, no one confirmed. I don't know the name of the fellow that reached out to me. Okay. Um, so. Is there anyone else that needs to be, that we haven't mentioned, recognized or anything that should be brought up at town meeting that we haven't already discussed? Any other business? Yeah, so, are we going to recognize uh, um, Steve, who's retiring? Should I don't know where where that kind of again where that goes. <coughs> Ms. Moderator. Other business. Okay. Other business. Okay. Yeah. I'll be glad to. Uh, You'd be glad to speak. Yeah, to I'll speak to that. <clears throat> okay, great. Do we need to? I I assume we don't need to do any more. He's on the job now, two two months. You know. No, I don't, I don't think so. A brief in your introduction, right. opening oh. to in, set in the, the stage. In the introduction of the people, and we wish to welcome, you know, you know, Tom Lights and stuff like that. I'll give, give your home phone number and your, <laughs> all, 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 all your personal information. <laughs> He'll get me back. Uh, all uh, right, let's uh, get uh, him uh, home uh, tonight before we give out his phone get number. Me back Come on. Help officer. Okay. Uh, What's the sense of giving out his home phone or he's never there? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, unless you have any other questions, Jeff, I think we're, we're good. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Thanks Thank for you for your service. For Thank you. And we, we hope that your replacement will live up to your oh, I'm sure. commendation. I'm sure recommendation. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. The next item is on the tobacco licenses <coughs> for. Brockton Corporation, Shaw's, Wesco, Shell Station, and Cumberland Farms, AGS, uh, Vermont Village Market, RG Blake Enterprises, Mobile Station, 
Tobacco Substitute Endorsement, Brockton Corporation, Shaw's, Westco Incorporated, Shell Station and Cumberland Farms, R.G. Blake Enterprises, Mobile Station. What this has come about is uh, it's been determined that we're, we've been somewhat derelict in our duties that we're supposed to, just like we do on the consent agenda item where we do liquor licenses, we're supposed to do tobacco licenses as well. Hmm. And Annually? We have, what? Annually and, do we have to do this? Uh, yep. And I think it's just a requirement. We haven't done it. We've been advised by that we should do it, and that's why it's here. I wondered why that was pulled out of the consent agenda items. But yeah, it, well, of course, it's, it it's, it's now going to become a consent agenda yeah. item. So, so any, any dis discussion on the tobacco licenses? It's more, I don't think, you know, from discussions that I've had in both liquor licenses <coughs> and tobacco licenses, really the only reason for that I think it's ever been that one has been denied. It's usually for a, Violation. a, a violations, mostly sales to under underage people, and it might not be the first occurrence. You know, if some, you know, any of these businesses can make one mistake, but it's usually for multiple, you know, mm -hmm. you know, occurrences of violations. Well, and aren't they also uh, already uh, overseen by a state? Uh, Right. Body. Liquor, liquor control. Liquor control. Right. Uh, it's, it's up to them to administer the fines and that sort of thing, I would expect. Right. But we have to still do kind of like we do on the consent agenda, uh, approve, approve those. It's a municipal function. Roger. I'll uh, move that we approve uh, all the tobacco licenses listed, listed here. Thank second. you. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Next item is resolution in support of <coughs> H82 regarding the former Stanley Wasson Hall site. Tom. Thank you. And I, I'm not sure if I emailed this out Friday or not, but it's in your packet. Um, and I did send it to Danny a little bit ago. Um, so I was in front of the uh, the State House um, about Stanley Wasson Hall, a bill that um, our state representatives introduced. Um, I thought overall was positive. Um, the Department of Building and General Services at the state level uh, essentially owns and manages the property and they're not opposed to the transfer. Not opposed to the transfer? The transfer of the site to the town. Um, and I think that means a lot because if they had run into the committee meeting and said, well, we want to use this for X, Y, Z in the future, I think the committee probably would have listened to their own staff. Um, <coughs> the state has, um, I don't know if it's a law or, or a rule, um, but they have a history of transferring property at fair market value and that makes a certain amount of sense since it's owned by everyone. Everyone should get, get the revenue and no one should get a break per se. Um, so their, their number was $400,000, um, but they also made it clear that the, the legislature can overrule that and can transfer it to the town for less. Um, even at $400,000, I think that um, it's a really fair price, given it's, depending on how you draw the line, two and a quarter, two and a half acres. Um, <coughs> And the bill is an option, it's not, it's not a transfer, it's an option. So they, they've talked about some contingencies that would be in the bill, which would be conceivably a, a time stamp that we'd have to act on it, um, and some requirement that um, you know, we're using it for the intended purpose. Um, in talking to um, our zoning folks, um, our, our general rule um, for that area is you can put 30 units in a building, um, per acre, so two and a half acres would be 75 units. Again, you might draw the line a little little smaller, but you could in theory put 75 housing units on that site. Um, what I said in, in my testimony was based on some conversations with people on the select board, um, 
Now there's some support for downstreet style projects like affordable housing, but there's also some support for market rate housing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's not a 50 acre site, so you, you know, you're unlikely to subdivide it and have two developers in the same site. Um, but I made it clear to the committee that um, conversations with the select board, it seems to be general support for, for housing at that site. Um, and one of their questions was, okay, has the select board taken any formal action? And I said, well, EFUD took a formal action and the town took a formal action by putting funding for downstreet in the budget to show some support for affordable housing. But on this site, they have not, you've not taken formal action to support it. So um, they're gonna have me back for some testimony at a future meeting. And I'm hoping then you're interested in taking formal action and signing the resolution. So again, it's a it's essentially a non-binding bill would give us the right of first refusal on that property. And I would tell you at four hundred thousand um, dollars, if the town <coughs> exercised that right and had the option, um, I think our job would be to recover that four hundred thousand dollars with a development agreement, and I think we could do that. Have you had that? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, have you had that uh, discussion with Down Street? A little bit, yeah. And, have one and they, they find that uh, um, uh, some of money, something that they could afford, think they could afford. Down Street, and there's other other developers. Mm -hmm. um, I've not had any detailed conversation with Down Street about um, whether or not they can do a mix of, of housing, affordable and market rate. Right. They can. They can't, you said? They can. They, I know I used to be on the board, and you're, they're able to do a mixed, mixed housing. There's nothing. They, have, they usually will have a percent that will be required to be of affordable housing. How would you f fix, how would you fit market rate housing in, on a lot like that with like a condominium unit or something? No, just have, you know, apartment rentals. Oh, so you're saying market apartment, apartment complex. complex. Market rate apartments, oh, right, not, not yeah. just so for, for sale. I'm thinking when you say <coughs> market rate housing, I'm thinking you're talking You're thinking about of residential condos, housing, you condos. know, single owned yeah. PUDs, yeah. something of that nature. No, it would, it, it'd, be, it'd be all apartments, just some, a percent, usually they would have, sell tax credits and a percent of the uh, building or buildings would have to be uh, geared to meeting their tax credit requirements. So I want to touch base a little bit on, on our goal here as you know, this affordable housing seems to come to the forefront. One of the major, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from my perception, one of the major goals here is to provide work, workforce housing. Uh, for the businesses and you know employers and whatnot, um, you know I don't know how fast 51 South Main is moving. Uh, as I had asked the, the gal there, I forget her name from Down Street. Um, I, I kind of wanted Nicole. her to repeat it again the other night about the inability to specifically require workforce, you know, rentals. Right. Uh, that isn't, they can't do that and I get it. Um, so I don't want to end up, go ahead, Melissa. No, keep going. Oh, I don't want to end up, I know we're having a problem with affordable housing in general, but I don't want to end up cutting ourselves short by not providing what seems to be the precedent of the, the workforce portion of that effort. Um, if I'll let Alyssa go and then Roger, then I have If there's something that. that we can do to <coughs> kind of direct it in that, in that direction. Alyssa. Alyssa. Well, I guess two questions. So one, Tom, are we, is the goal to get this committee ASAP, we sign this tonight, or, or did you just say that you're 
proposing we wait on this resolution until you testify again. I'm proposing sign it before I testify. Okay, and so I would just say I support that in that I think I did sit in on the testimony. I work in Montpelier, so it was fun to be able to sneak over and sit in. Um, and my bottom line is I think it's, I mean, as outlined in a lot of whereas is, I think it's a good idea to put housing here. I really hear the thing of the mix of what cost and income level and affordability is to be worked out. And I think in terms of this resolution, Tom did a really good addressing it, recognizing that we, I mean, again, I support one, we don't have all those answers yet. We just right. don't like the, you know, I felt like the committee was looking for, like Tom just outlined, like, how, does the town support this? And do they support housing there? And at least from what I sit in on 51 South Main Street, recognizing that was a really different project, actually the comment I most often heard is, why not Stanley Watson? There's so much space over there and that's where we should. So I feel like I felt sitting in that room, like I could say, yes, I think there's community support. I think these questions around what that breakdown of rents and ownership still need to be worked out. So I thought Tom did a really nice job saying this, the like sec, um, the last whereas is, um, a commitment to engage with the community to ensure the site is utilized for housing in a manner that has broad support. And that's really careful language because it's not unanimous support. I think we're all kidding ourselves if we think every community member is going to be through the roof about this. But all the whereas is above it is about like it is dire. And since this came out, VHFA came up with like our median house price. And I'll pull up my table. I pulled them out during a meeting. And from 2017 to, you know, it's just gone through the roof. But I think that engagement around like what are affordable rents, who can live here, is it a private developer, is it downstreet? I think acknowledging that's a big, messy question mm -hmm. that still needs to be worked out doesn't preclude supporting this resolution. In my mind, this resolution says, we think the highest and best use of this land is putting housing and candidly a lot of housing there because we really need housing. And this is not building up in the hills. This is not impacting our natural environment. I know we just had a messy town proposal for a, apartments in a different location, but this is a developed location where we think housing is really good. The state isn't doing anything with it they're potentially giving us the option to take it. And I think that's a huge opportunity. And I think this gives us the flexibility to be able to have those conversations. I think those are gonna be nuanced and messy and complex conversations about subdivision and ownership. Um, but I think the bottom line is that this resolution is really important and does give us that flexibility. So I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't want to get locked into something that handcuffed us to, to you know, maybe the priority directive that people are most concerned about. I think, and it's saying it's housing, and I think that was you know, what Tom conveyed, is like this, it could be permitted for this many housing units. It's, they asked about water sewer, yep, it's served by water sewer, yep, that would be a good fit. But said the mix of workforce versus affordable has not been worked out yet, is not finalized. It's um, uh, I just wanted to let people know that I was, uh, uh, Got, received an email from uh, one of our constituents, uh, Mike Griffiths, who lives directly across the street from uh, the uh, this facility on uh, Park Row, and he uh, wanted to know what was going on. Uh, I had mentioned to him earlier, uh, back when the vote was being taken on 51 South Main, that we were also looking at that site uh, as a potential uh, site for for ho uh, affordable housing. And uh, I just said, you know, well, I, first of all, I invited him to, to come to here tonight if he was available uh, so we could find out more about it. Uh, he's obviously uh, an abutting landowner and concerned. Uh, his preference would be that it be maintained as an open Green space. open space. And I said, yeah, I, I understand that and I sympathize with you. I sort of also like the idea of that big open field. but. The truth is, we need to, a lot of affordable housing here. Uh, there's tremendous demand, and you've got a site that's served by water and sewer, and because the um, the state complex is not being used to its full extent, uh, water and sewer systems are, are operating at well under capacity, and so there are a whole bunch of very compelling reasons why that would be a great site for, for housing. And uh, 
you know, I sympathize with you. I also am impacted in part as a landowner uh, right, ne right near 51 South Main. I've got the, the fire station, which was rebuilt right in my backyard. But, you know, that's uh, one of the things that I understand as being a village resident that uh, I, I'm, th that's going to be my, uh, my, my, uh, the, the way life is going to be. That, that we're going to continue to move forward, and I think it's a good thing for, for the town. So Welcome to population growth. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I actually support uh, the, the growth of Waterbury. Uh, I think, you know, we we got to do it with our eyes open and make some good planning around it, but I think it's a good thing for the town to, to continue to grow. Uh, it helps our schools, helps our economy, helps uh, keep the tax base uh, lower. So. Um, I'm going to uh, move that we uh, support this resolution. Is there a second? second? I did just want to make one comment. I know to address your concern about workforce and affordable housing, those two issues are really the same because affordable housing, you know, people don't realize they equate <coughs> sometimes affordable housing as low income housing. The numbers that a lot of times people could get into some of these affordable housing projects are fairly generous. Something that an average, you know, run-of-the-mill workforce person will be able to afford those apartments. We have, we have even several of those right on our board. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't preclude people. And even some of the market rate housing may be available for some of the, you know, quote, you know, fulfilling, you know, different employers' work workforce needs. So I think, I just think we need more housing in this community, and I think this will help, and I don't see, the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is I know with the, the $400,000 number, I know, was that number developed based upon before Deacon, before, <coughs> that's, you their know, that's their current number. That's their current number. Okay, because I know in, in discussions we have had, you talked about a $200,000 number, too. The, there was a number of 300000 yeah, which was, three. what was, that came about when it was offered to the town for the new municipal office uh, eight or, or 10 years okay. ago. <coughs> what, I, what I tell you is there's, if this bill passes, it's July until it's signed. Right. Um, and then we're going to have a long period of time to do an evaluation. So what I tell you is there's there's a lot of experts in this field that could help us along the way. Right. Um, you know, that's what attorneys and commercial real estate agents are for. So we can, we can put together a development agreement here, and I think we could get that done in time um, and have the basics, and not have the basics, but have that completed before we'd execute a purchase, so you know what you're getting into right. beforehand. And that could look, that could be a fairly simple transfer. And one thing I said to the committee is, it could be that the town doesn't have to work that hard because we have an entity that does this in our town already, and so maybe this is a, it's a fairly simple transfer. But it could be something more complex where um, the town owns the site during the development process. Um, and there's some investment along the way that we get back at the end. It just depends on the, on the ultimate model that's going to benefit us both so in the end. If you're speaking in reference to what I talked about earlier tonight, a possible TIF. Not a TIF for this. No, not a TIF. I was going to no. say, it wouldn't be. That, that's, that's not uh, that's the right word I'm looking for. That's not, uh, doesn't reach the level of a TIF. Um, no, TIFs <coughs> is a whole separate legislative process. Um, right. There's a there's a bill in front of the legislature where you could do a a TIF on a on a per site per project basis. Um, but if you're not familiar with the TIF, basically you um, any TIF has to be approved by the legislature. It stands for tax increment financing. Um, I've dealt with it a lot um, in the past. Um, the short version is, if your TIF is approved, um, you can invest in public improvements and bond for those improvements, and the 
you can collect the education taxes, 75% of the education taxes on Grand West growth directly in your TIF district. Um, but in this case, um, there's limited public improvements. The water and sewer is there, there's a road there. Um, it's a ready site, that's what makes it, I think, attractive. So the town's not gonna be on the hook for a lot of investment up front. Uh, <clears throat> my only concern is that at this, at this uh, economic seminar that I went to, they did give an example, I believe it was in St. Albans, where they moved forward with a project up there, uh, and midway through, the economy went, and uh, the whole thing imploded, and the town got hurt pretty bad. Uh, yeah, in this case, I think we're just looking at a fairly simple agreement where we'd, I think the goal is to, um, in an ideal world, we'd own the property, and when you own the property, then you can determine your fate. Um, you can do a lot when you have site control, but without site control, presumably the state's gonna transfer it to whoever else, we don't know. But with site control, we can determine everything. Yeah. Well, would we have some expenses? Sure, we'd have some legal fees, we'd have some architectural fees, we'd wanna, I think, talk to the community and, and talk about a design. So, would there be some direct town investment? Uh, without a doubt, I think the goal would be to recover it on the back end of the sale. Okay, so yeah, well, well I guess that's the part that I misunderstood when you said on the back end. Uh, that's what was going to be my question. You mean like the immediate, almost the immediate back end, not not years down the road? <clears throat> or were you, were you That'd thinking? That would be the goal. I mean, if, if I had my drug up in an ideal world, we'd get the property, we'd, we'd work with some, some experts and craft a development agreement whether that's Downstreet or some other entity. Um, and we'd make an extra buck on it and put it into a investment. Put it into an investment fund and maybe have a special reserve for, for the future for housing issues. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> motion passes. Roger, if you want to sign your version and pass it around, that we all have it. And I can work with Danny if she's able to sign it. Yep. Next item on the agenda is discussion and review of initial draft of select board goals. No, oh, VCDP. Oh, sorry. That's the. I uh, as a VCDB, VCDP grant application related to 51 South Main Street. Yes, and Thank I, wanted you, Karen. To, I wanted to get this on the agenda now because I've got to formally start the process. Um, a VC, um, VCDP is Vermont Community Development Program. Um, Working with Downstreet on a VCDP grant uh, for five hundred thousand dollars for Fifty One South Main. Um, How much? Five hundred thousand. So the, in essence, um, Downstreet is doing about ninety nine percent of the work here. This is a pass through, for the town. Um, <coughs> so in short, um, these funds would be used to pay uh, direct development expenses. Um, Downstreet would manage all that. Um, Downstreet would pay the bills directly, and then we would draw down the VCDP funds and reimburse Downstreet. So we're not we're not out on a cash basis. We're not exposed. Um, aside from a little bit of my time and maybe whoever is sitting and sees Steve Watchby's stare time, um, it's no town expense here. Um, no real risk that I see it. Um, Downstreet would need to come before you at your March 20th meeting. Um, and I know that's normally a pretty busy meeting because you're it's your organizational meeting, but they, uh, as part of this application process, we need to have a public hearing. Uh, so we'd be, we'd be in front of you again with some more details. There'd be a public hearing and a formal resolution need to pass. Um, but wanted to get this on the agenda now just because we need to get the grant written uh, because it's due not long after that meeting. Well, and just to state for information, correct me if I'm wrong, 
the requirement of these funds is they have to go through the town. We're not just doing it because it's fun and hunky dory. The requirement of the federal CDBG funds is that they go to the municipality. So um, appreciate hearing that. It's not even a cash basis concern. Um, I completely support it. And there's no, no match requirements? No match requirements. Okay. Well, I think there probably is, but downstream, 10 or 20%. No match requirements in the part of the town. Well, <laughs> yeah. they're paying it for us. Okay. Roger. I move we authorize uh, Tom to move forward with the VCDB grant application uh, for 51 South Main. Second. We have a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Now, discussion and review of initial draft of select board goals. It is, the temperature is dropping. Yeah, heat's not working well. You'll see that invoice soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that? For the heating system repair. What's that? You'll see an invoice soon. Yeah, some heat pumps? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the giving a heat part of here. light. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. I'm shaking, trying to take notes. Tom, do you want to lead us off in that? This sure. Um, so this is, I think, conversation number one, although hopefully we don't need to spend too many meetings on it. Um, took, took what folks gave me and tried to amalgamate the goals into um, some sort of consolidated document for, for conversation. Um, and, and I think take it from there. The, um, <coughs> my thought process, again, is it's, it's good for me to have this list to work off of. I didn't um, print them. Okay. I'm sorry. So, no, okay. Don't run off some copies. Um, I brought a copy. Yeah. 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 That'd be yeah. helpful, yeah. Yeah, if you can. Yeah, I can look at, us, it. Can I look at it on the phone here. Come right back. So I was going to ask, you, you did put this together? You did a great job. Yeah. And we can amend that, take different ideas, add to it. But my thought was to um, essentially have a document we could review, um, try to assign some <coughs> completion dates yeah. where we can. Some items are a little more ongoing. And then I think try to have um, maybe a semi-annual review of pull it up every six months and say, here's what we've done. <coughs> Here's what we need to add to it. And treat it as a, as, as a living, living, breathing document. Maybe there's a bit of a selfish motivation because it makes my life a little bit easier to be able to look at it and say, here's what I need to focus on. Here's what's due. There's a lot there. Yeah, I see. My reaction is it's great and we can't prioritize all well, of it because it's more than two that's pages. That's my big concern is how much is there can you know, it's nice to have all these goals, but I don't know how much. Well, may, maybe in a five-year plan, I could see this is more applicable. I can tell you, when I read it, I said, "Boy, being a select board member, not let alone the town manager, just that job just got a lot tougher." You know, but that's good. That's the point, I think. Keep keep everybody on their toes. You know? So you're saying timeline, and potentially maybe some of those timelines could be walked. Like, is it a, do we pick a top priority per category, or um, a top five overall, or just give everything a timeline, some of which are more than yeah. a year? And as Karen puts them off, I mean, we can go through these, and I think some of them are fairly easy to execute. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of, of I probably did. She can take mine, because I can look at this. Oh, I'm going to see Elizabeth later. Oh. <laughs> it's actually a little hasty, so some of them might not be staying right. Just check if you have three pages. I'll take one if you don't need one. But do you need one? So do we want to go? No, do we want to go for it? Sub, subtitle by subtitle. How if we feel? Happy to do that. Yeah, um, I think you can hit it real quick. And just, yeah, uh, if we got any questions, we can grab it and stop it. And to Chris's point about getting some of these things done, um, on the second page, 
there's a bullet, um, and Alyssa referred me to this. Um, Bristol has a essentially a, a one year forward calendar that's agendas. And so what I like about that is this this concept about taking advantage of Arts Fest, NQID, or other events to have the community conversation that you've raised. Um, you know, a simple way to address that is to say, all right, um, you know, March 20th is your organizational meeting, but maybe in April we should put that on the agenda and start and mm -hmm. devote a half an hour to it. Uh, like so I like Rotary in for NQID <coughs> or something like that. So I like that Bristol calendar where they they have certain things scheduled months in advance so, so they all know, here's deadlines, here's what we've got to be prepared for. Um, and they've also got things on their calendar that are administrative that are almost easy to forget, but some of those resolutions you've got to pass every year. And so I like that concept in general. Yeah. But <coughs> and some of these you can, you know, you can take a straw poll and say, no, we don't want to do this. Take it off the list. Well, I think community outreach is really important. I, uh, you know, I for one, I notice <coughs> a lot of times. I think it's important to select. You know, we can't all be at every meeting in town and stuff like that but i think it's important you know for us to be there e even some of just the fun events you know and qid the arts fest and stuff like that you know you know i re you know i know i had a conversation with bill shepluck i know it was like wdev's 90th anniversary mm -hmm. which is, was a pretty substantial activity i think it was just myself and bill Hmm. You know, none of the other board members were there, which I thought I was. A, I was a little bit. So, you know, I don't want to mm -hmm. tell people, oh, you should really go to. You know, but you know, just like WDV is kind of eyes and ears of the community, kind of like front porch mm -hmm. forum and water <laughs> more than down. ears, actually. Yeah. Um, Bristol does a really great job putting them at the bottom of their agendas too. Shout out to Valerie who's their town administrator and worked here very briefly. Um, but they have a literally like upcoming events that may be of interest which is both our meeting, every DRB yeah. meeting, every planning commission and relevant community events. I'm just going to be really candid. I don't know that I have the capacity tonight to, right. I, I didn't come prepared to this meeting to be able to give top ones and I feel like I'm feeling a little stressed about how much is still on the agenda and wanting to give Tom really good feedback, um, but also wanting to make sure there's space here for board members to contribute on goals. So I'm just wondering if there's a strategy around that. I think that's a good, because I, I was I'm very much with you. I think this was, I think for comment, I think we all, if we had something that anyone thought there's something that's really not right, Maybe tonight was something where people would say that, but I think we should dwell on that and maybe give some more comments to Tom for a discussion. You know, because really it's going to be the next board's you know you know goals. Really, you know, we don't know if we're all going to be here. You know, yeah, that's a good point. So it, you know, I thought it was well thought out. It's uh, it, it, it's in depth and it covers a lot. Um, very inclusive. I can hit on a couple of quick things if that would be helpful. Sure. Um, under community outreach, I started sending to, to you all the weekly updates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just looking at that, um, I think the month I can do I could do without spending hours on it. Um, I think I could do a monthly front porch forum update, sort of the highlights of the weeklies and amalgamate it a bit. Um, you know, some of those things are, are pretty internal and pretty small, so I think monthly might be appropriate, and, and I'm happy to do that if you want that. I appreciate that. Oh, sorry. Um, I appreciate that, Tom, and I, but I also, and I wonder if it needs to be you. I think a lot of what you're doing and taking time to do is super efficient and helpful. Uh, on this one, I wonder... I hate to sign up for something, but if it's coming from the select board, I think um, people often say to us, like, like Roger, I received that same email, like, oh, I don't like surprises. It's n nothing's a surprise. It's on agendas. It's on, it's all public, et cetera. But, and also um, people don't necessarily have the capacity to go out of their way to look for stuff. So if, if we just put something on, you know, monthly from the board, 
um, that are bullet points. Here's what we talked about last month. It could come from the minutes. Here's how to get the minutes. Um, and here's how to check the agendas for next month. You know, Tom and, and, um, Teresa do, do a huge update and it's great, but I don't, I don't necessarily think we have to do something like that. Just something proactive. Here's what happened last month. Don't forget. Here's when the meetings are. And that might go a long way to, to make people feel like they're not getting, you know, blindsided by something on an agenda, whether that's the, the case or not. And I don't know if other people agree, but I just feel like maybe that's not the best use of your time. And, uh, either our secretary next board, you know, if that's a great job for a secretary, or, I mean, it's something I enjoy doing. I won't have the capacity for the next month or so, but it's something I would enjoy doing in the future. Is your goal, and I don't, I think that's a good idea, Danny, but I'm wondering, was your goal to, to inform the, the community members of things that have kind of happened internally in the, in the municipality, which, we don't really have, the board doesn't really have control over. Um, I mean, you're sending us weekly manager's items, which kind of almost is, a, is a, a version of what you're talking about, right? right. My goal is to, to have you tell me what you want. <laughs> I don't have an agenda here. If, you know, some folks said they want, you know, more communication to the public. This was an idea. I support it. I really hear you, Danny. I'm going to be candid. I personally like had the intention to be Alyssa who loves local government and sends all the exciting updates of what I'm doing on select board. And just know I personally have not had that capacity. So I think if Tom is willing to assist and support, I think maybe it is important for a board to think about what are board initiatives and prerogatives and should there be board communication for those. But I think Tom's point about like one, I, I think there are things in the weekly report that certainly don't rise to like general public interest right. around no, the la latest and Pick greatest and yeah, internal machinations. But I think like, you know, I'm thinking if we have a really healthy agenda tonight, you know, this month the select board worked or t the town or we can we can think about messaging. But I think hitting the high points around like prepping for town meeting. Here's all about town meeting. And by the way, some stuff happening about housing. Um, Again, I hear you, but I think some, I think if Tom is willing to spend a reasonable amount of time and thus far he's shown only outstanding time management to make it a little more bite size, I personally think that's awesome. I agree with what everyone has said. The only comment I would make, you just mentioned Front Porch Forum. A lot of people don't, aren't on front. I would have that both on Front Porch and Waterbury Roundabout, I think. You know, between the, I don't know what other vehicles there are. The town website, which town, everyone can access the town for website, free. But I don't know how many income. people really look at the town website. I, I, sorry to be a naysayer, but there there are a percent of people who do look at the town website, but I don't think it's a huge amount. Uh, Chris, so I just want to tell Danny, I understand your concern because I already said at the last meeting uh, that I told him. Not to take on so much that he burns himself out. Yeah. Because we want him around for a while. <laughs> so if he's if he's within himself okay with it, then I think we probably are too. But, uh, and he'll tell us if he's in over his head, I think. Okay. Uh, Roger. <laughs> yeah, uh, I also think it's a good idea. Uh, I think among other things, it'll help uh, create uh, a better awareness of uh, who Tom is and what he's doing with the community, uh, help him, you know, get off on the right foot with the uh, with the folks. And whether it has to be monthly, I would say, you know, like let's start out, see how that looks. Maybe it's every other month, but you'll sure. you'll find sure. the right level. Yeah. Good point, Roger. Did Lisa? Did you have your hand up? I know it was just, yeah. on Zoom. Sky way out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good, man. Oh. Hi, folks. Oh, Sorry, yeah. I'm just zooming in tonight. Um, Tom, I would love to see the weekly or monthly or however often the, the reports are. I mean, I, I'm trying to put select board stories out. You know, it might not be every meeting. I try to combine things, you know, but if people are, are reading the stuff that I'm putting out, I'm trying to keep up with what the board is doing, too, in the in the stories. We've got a newsletter every week. 
Um, and so, you know, this is public information and, and I would be happy to, you know, incorporate that into the reporting that I'm doing and that I'm pulling things to do stories to get into more detail about and that sort of thing and to try to get people to, you know, have, have that be sort of a habit for them to know where to look for information. Um, and I think the website, I mean, if you're going to be doing this sort of like a, you know, from the town manager's office kind of column or something, you know, we could be running that or at the very least, like someone just said, I think it was Alyssa said, you know, the town website could easily just have those there as PDFs that people could know, you know, there's a, there's a page for the town clerk. There's, I think there's a page for the town manager, isn't there? Um, you could have, you could put those there too. So I think it's just a matter of letting people know where the information is that they can, you know, look for it. Um, but anyway, to whatever extent you're, you're doing these, if you could include me on the distribution, that would be great. Um, over in Duxbury, by the way, they started something like that. Their select board started this last summer where they started like a town listserv. It's just one way communication. They do a monthly email from the select board um, that goes out. You sign up and you're, it's about I think they've got only about two or three hundred people on it right now. Um, but they do a monthly email. And then those emails are also on their town website for anybody who wants to go. If they don't get them in their inbox or they miss them, they can find them there. Similar kind of idea. Thank you. So we'll do it. anyway, Appreciate thanks. It. Yeah. What was that, Roger? You said <coughs> um, under volunteer board service, just a couple things to think about. Um, maybe good things to discuss at your organizational meeting. So there's... I think there's some confusion internally about whose job it is to recruit for volunteer boards. You know, is there's a vacancy on the planning commission? Does Steve Watts Beach go and try to advertise for that? I know you appoint, but from a staff perspective, it seems like there's a bit of a mix. So just clarifying that might be helpful. And then um, something a couple people said to me is um, this idea of select board liaisons for committees. Mm -hmm. might also be useful. I'm not proposing that you attend every committee meeting, but it might be nice from the committee member's perspective to have a point of, point of contact. Mm -hmm. Good idea. And I just add, I had a number of things here, and just like talking to the boards and committees more <coughs> regularly. Again, I'm a planning junkie, so I go to the planning commission all the time, but like understanding what they're doing and what eventually is gonna make their way onto our plate to, yeah. in, in that case, adopt zoning regulations or do whatever conservation commission does, you know, but I think like I have tried to attend some of the meetings, but having that be more regularly or maybe present to us. Yeah. I agree with you because I, I try to attend meetings, but it's kind of more happenstance. If there's a topic of interest, you know, I'll, I'll attend. But, you know, it's I, I don't think it's a bad idea to have some sort of regular participation at the various committees. But I think ultimately the different commissions have a responsibility to recruit. You know, I think, you know, you know, they know their subject matter. They hopefully know who's good people in the community that might be uh, interested. You know, if they need help from, you know, the board, I'm sure, you know, if, if, we, if they would have any, we would have any suggestions, I'm sure we would. I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, depends upon the commission and stuff like that as to, you know, who we know that's good. But I think the committees themselves know the best. <clears throat> Anything else you want to call Anything. attention to? Um, it, it's not said maybe very directly, but um, sort of along the lines of the committees, is that something I've talked about with a number of folks internally is that um, sometimes there's unclear understandings about what's a what's just done, what's a written rule, what's just mm. the way it's always been done. And so right. there's, mm -hmm. there's some desire to sometimes clarify that and to look at what we've always done and say, well, do we need to do that? Um, I think a great example is grants. Um, <clears throat> do we need your approval? Should we need your approval to apply for a grant? Mm -hmm. If it's Waterbury Reservoir, you know, if the grant application requires it, that's one thing. But if it doesn't, if it's something we've always done and it's passed through funding, maybe it's a consent agenda item and you just approve it um, because there's not much to talk about. Um, yeah. Maybe if it's a half million dollars, there's something to talk about. Um, so just, I think there's some desire amongst folks to try to wade through some of those issues. Streamline things a little better. <coughs> 
Um, but yeah, if we need more time and we're behind, that's, that's fine. I just wanted to hit a few highlights, I think. So maybe sh we should all then re-comment on this discussion and where we feel, where each one of the board members feels that, you know, where your time and where our time should be spent. Re-comment and maybe rank a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like to, you know, obviously the town finances that, that mm. the development of long-term capital plan and paved roads, and I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's where I come in from my perspective as far as being able to shed some light on some things that I'd like to see change uh, and happen moving forward to save ourselves some money and mm -hmm. create some better circumstances in our infrastructure longer, longer lasting I know on your automatic. On your town operations, you mentioned adopt a modern personnel. I know we have just kind of discussed that. I know you have that kind of in the progress. Do you know about what kind of time frame we're looking at? You know, uh, yeah, you know, um, HR policy. <coughs> the, the process I'd like to follow is I'd like to have a draft to the select board, just an internal draft, um, and I'll have that to you by the end of the week. Okay. Um, and there's gonna, and the reason I want that too internally is I'm going to propose some changes that um, you know they're changes and some are some are just about employee management but some are some will save you money some will cost you money and they're if you don't support them initially I'm not going to roll them out to staff but my, my thought is to get just comments some buy-in from the select board and then I would have a series of staff conversations. That would take a little while because I, I find on these issues um, people are more open in smaller groups. So I don't want to have an all an all in meeting. I want to have, you know, probably five or six. Um, would hopefully get some buy in and, and perhaps some, some improvements. Would and you then, have a, like an employee, <coughs> like a couple of employees representing them as they give input? <coughs> I think I just sit down eyeball eyeball with everyone. And, okay, with the whole. But again, it's, I think smaller groups would work better. Yep. And then, so I'm hopeful that we could have a, you know, an adopted handbook um, in a couple months. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So everyone will re re comment and rank what they think is important to Tom. Uh, let's say with it. By the end of the week. Okay. You mean important from our perspective to Tom? Right. <laughs> and then oh. uh, next item is is really they kind of it. Uh, the historical society is requested to use uh, the this room for some ongoing displays. I know Jane Willard has had some conversations with me and I've had some conversations with Tom and he he didn't think we needed to have some, you know, a really select board approval. And I kind of agree with that. Just this more in information they're looking at, you know, maybe changing, you know, adding some displays here that have to do with the history of, 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 of the community and, I assume you would be the select board would be a, a supportive of that. Well, back when we were designing this project, that was one of my number one plugs uh, was to incorporate the historical society in this building so that they could do just that. Do right. Have a rotation of uh, historical memorabilia uh, periodically put through the place um, for the people's, you know. Uh, and that's what the intent is here, is, you know, you know, it's really nice to Sarah Lee things here, but it's kind of, things get dated and people, you know, when they come here, they, they look around, it would be, it would just be a nice informational thing. And it's just nothing I think we need to have a motion, but yeah, I assume, we're, Roger? 
Uh, I was, uh, since it's on the agenda, I will move that we endorse the Historical Society's request to use a steel room for ongoing displays. Thank you. Second? Yep. Motion is second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'm sorry, who seconded? Chris. Chris. Uh, and we heard the previous note. Sorry, it should have been additional discussion. Knowing that, like, we do or don't need to approve those things is a future policy, procedure, norm right. we can examine. Right. Uh, next item, which was added to the agenda, was uh, uh, about the town manager reports. Chris, since you brought that up, the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> should I follow up to Lisa? Tom, when you're, um, as a staff, can I say something about the Historical Society? Um, I love the idea of changing the displays. Um, if, if when you're working with them, you can uh, gently remind them that sometimes it can be really disruptive in the office okay. when they're doing that. Okay. It's not their intention to be disruptive, and we all know that. But um, there's been times in the past, particularly, where they've been lugging these huge uh, display cases and things of that nature, and it can be a really busy time. Yeah, fair so, enough, yeah. yeah. I'll speak with Jane Willard about that. Yeah, and, and I don't want to. Right, in a very I, nice yeah, sport, the I nice don't in any way want it to come across as prickly. I'm just, I'm just hurt. If there right can now. be some. No, it could be very disruptive. Like things. Mondays, for example. Mondays are always busy. So if there's one day to Midday is good. Midday week's probably a good later time. Later in the week. Later in the day is I'll always have to, I'll have them converse with you and when they're well, going. Well, I don't, I don't, <laughs> just an ask. It's okay. It's not an order. <laughs> Thank you. Tom's the contact. <clears throat> okay. Um, Chris. Can you just give us a little update on the, the completed loan review or the new applicant? <coughs> if that was, <clears throat> touch on that just a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure I can, because oh. uh, that hasn't gone before EFUD yet, and I'm... I see. Okay. I think that, uh, I think some of that conversation, and it's a review of their, you know, their financial statements, things like that, so I'm not sure that's an okay. open session item. Um, Certainly the loan approval would be at that stage, right. but... The ongoing heat issue, um, that has been problematic. It's been problematic since I've been here. Feels yeah. like it is. <laughs> since they were back again, back during the design of this project, um, I encourage them to incorporate uh, tubing in all of our, our concrete slabs throughout the building for fear of heat problems uh, mm -hmm. down the road with this new and improved heat source. And here we are. Uh, so I'm wondering little bit about what the heck's going on and because it is it does seem to be hitting our pocket pretty hard from time to time yeah the um, the challenge is you know the, the local technician comes here and, and reads the error code and it's error code you know e73 and there's a there's a book that's thick about error codes and they've got to call the manufacturer in Texas hmm. um, the, the bottom line is it's it's Sounds like to me it's not the heating system itself, it's the communications equipment that interacts with it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't know which zones are firing, things like that. So we had a situation a while back where, you know, our side of the office was 60 and the library was 80. Mm -hmm. um, it's always an issue when it's Half really cold out. sides. <coughs> um, yeah, when it's really cold out that day, it was 15 below and really windy. I think the whole building struggled to keep up. Yeah. Um, the, um, I think the repair is something like ten to fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Haven't so seen that invoice yet, but it's coming. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and Woody's Woody's quite frankly had enough of it. Woody is ready to just put coal in and <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> that was my reasoning <laughs> for a wood couple trying to get them to incorporate yeah. tubing back then because uh, uh, because to retrofit something now is gonna be very difficult and expensive. Yeah. I'm just not sure what we can do at this point aside from yeah. fix what we have and yeah. I mean we didn't even have a generator and that wasn't in the original plans and, and something we, we were at a board meeting and so 
something got put in front of me that made the light come on and said, holy crap, we don't have a, a generator here? Mm -hmm. And uh, what if we have a power outage for a week or, you know, right. this whole place is going to go right to... <coughs> uh, it wasn't too long afterwards. We got a generator. Uh, so I see too. Also, um, just for a note of uh, apparatus and equipment maintenance conducted on Maple Street. Uh, where did I see it? A couple of small portable, oh, two portable pumps need to be brought to a small engine repair. No mechanic. My guess is. Um, my son has been very versed in making these repairs. The gas that we're using uh, is it left it left in a small engine for any period of time. Actually, skims over and creates mm -hmm. almost like a plastic film. He actually sent me video. I probably got it on my phone just yeah, a couple yeah. of days ago, where he had a little prick and he was picking. The film on the, the, the carburetor because it was plugging. So now they're making. It's expensive, uh, and but they're making gas. You can buy it uh, mixed, pre-mixed stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's expensive. But. Uh, that supposed to guarantee against this type of thing happening, and maybe it's mm -hmm. worth looking into. Uh, or we, you know, and I said to myself, this is wrong with the uh, ethanol gas or yeah. 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 And I said to my son the other day, you'd think there'd be an additive to keep that stuff from gelling up like stable, that. Stable, right. stable, stable like coming out of the solution. Uh, so that, that'd be my guess that that's mm -hmm. what's wrong with those, because he's, you know, he's constantly tearing our chainsaws and our generators and stuff apart to clean the carburetors and mm -hmm. uh, keep them running. But uh, anything, anything else, of course? No, I think we're... I think I'm good on everything else. Uh, yeah. No, I appreciate your, the, the updates too, Tom. Either. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, very helpful. I kind of asked Bill once upon a time about if he was going to do something like that. And it was hard to change an old old dog teaching new tricks. <coughs> I think that I think I could probably speak for the entire board. I think that that report was extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Good. Now, last item on the agenda before the executive session is the grant for Vermont Aquatic Nuisance. Yes, um, this is seeking approval to apply for this grant. Snuck up on us last minute. It's due. Um, March 3rd, um, but it's something that um, historically the town's really Steve has worked with friends of the Waterbury Reservoir on. This is the the greeter grant. It's uh, they're, they're seeking approval up to $5,000, pass through funds, no town expense, but these are where they station the individuals at the two boat launches and mm -hmm. try to keep out um, the invasives. I think the big one is is the uh, Bill foil. Bill foil. Mm -hmm. uh, spine, well, spiny naiads are already there, but they don't want to see that. It's more of that. Yeah. <coughs> no way of uh, getting rid of it at this point. <laughs> it's pretty poor. You look at that entire north arm, it's just like a map. And, okay. you know, unless you spent a lot of money with, you know, some sort of, uh, they have these grinder kind of things that remove it, but they will, it, it doesn't eliminate it. It will yeah, probably come back. It will just, you know, for a lot of places like Lake Bomazine that have milfoil problems, it cleans the problem up for people to fish and, and swim and stuff like that, but it comes back, so it's like an ongoing expense. Alyssa, you had a question? I was going to go ahead and move that the select board <coughs> authorize the submittal of the grant application to the Vermont Aquatic Nuisance Control Grant and Aid for up to $5,000 and authorize Tom to sign it. Second. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? An ounce of, an ounce of uh, what is it? Prevention is worth a pound of cure. I grew up in a town in, with our local pond was full of milfoil, and it was yeah. disgusting. We don't have milfoil yet, please. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 aye.
Any opposed? I have to abstain because I'm on the board of the fr Friends of Waterbury Reservoir. <laughs> so is this one of the items that you're talking about could possibly be on the consent agenda? I think so. Yeah. Right. One that's, you know, some of these organizations to have a yearly kind of pasture grant kind of application, I think that makes sense. It's kind of a, you know, a no-brainer, but anyone could make a comment if they thought there was a problem. So I think that's a good consent. Save a little time. And I think um, saving a little time was a great setup. Maybe the best news of the night is the executive session issue is resolved. So. Yes. Great. I'm not just saying Should we that. go into the executive wow. session to find out how? Or? <laughs> yeah. you, you can. Is there anything else to come before us? Motion to if adjourn. not, motion to adjourn. I so move. Second? I'll uh, second that one. We all in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>